Hi, welcome to Tessa's Nerf Room. So, I have made two videos on this channel that I would honestly consider to be angry reviews. I did the Zuru Longshot and the Elite 2.0 Ace. And while I will give the Zuru Longshot some credit because when it does work, it works moderately well. It just isn't a very good blaster. It's mediocre at best and subpar at worst. But the Ace is unforgivably bad. It is, in my opinion, the worst thing that Nerf has ever made. It is a blaster that is so awful that it's hard to find any redeeming features about it whatsoever, and I genuinely cannot find anything that is good about the Ace in any stretch of the imagination. But Hasbro has a talent of somehow managing to prove me wrong every single time I say something is the worst blaster that they will ever make. Do you guys remember when the Deploy was the worst blaster ever? I do too. The Deploy is not bad. The Deploy is kind of mid. That is why the Deploy was the worst blaster, because everything else in End Strike was fantastic. In the Elite series, they did stuff like the Surge Fire in the Titan CS50. Oh, that was the worst thing ever. The Battle Scout. Remember when the Battle Scout came out and that was the worst blaster ever? I would run a Battle Scout over this any time of day. But I think that when Nerf really reached their peak of bad blasters was when they did the Warden. Because the Warden didn't work. At all. The blaster had some questionable, redeemable qualities to it that maybe some people would enjoy using, but overall the blaster just was not good. The Warden wasn't a good release when it came out, and it still isn't a good release to this day. You can still get the original Elite Elite 2.0 Turquoise Warden, but the, it is mainly being sold in the Optimus Prime colors, and if you have to get a Warden for whatever reason, go with that, but that is besides the point. They have managed to prove me wrong again. I thought that it couldn't get any worse than the Ace. I genuinely thought that the Ace was the worst thing they would ever be able to do. Never! Because how can you get worse than the Ace? You really can't get worse than the Ace. What if you combined the all of the worst factors of the Ace, the Warden, and the Modulus Shadow? You get whatever unholy abomination this thing is. Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is gonna be an even angrier review than the Ace. Elite 2.0 Lock and Load, a blaster that was released in very, very late 2023 or early 2024. I cannot remember when this thing came out, and I really don't care, under the Elite 2.0 series. And originally, when the pictures of this thing came out, there was quite a bit of hope for it, because the Modulus Shadow originally was a very low barred blaster. That thing really didn't get any praise or appreciation at all. This thing was a complete re release of the Shadow with a bunch of different attachments and a re-release of an attachment that nerfers in the United States never got to enjoy in the first place. But I will address everything in good time. We gotta start with the design. And um, it is oversaturated with crap. So just really quickly, it comes with two barrels. It comes with this barrel, which is okay, kind of meh. It comes with this, which I will address later. And it comes with a regulator stock. I'll explain why this is a bad choice later, but it also came with a modulus stock, like the one that came with the modulus ECS-10. Mine, it wasn't in the box. I guess some kids stole it, but it doesn't matter, because even without all those attachments, this blaster still has plenty to talk about. The design of this blaster is actually pretty cool. It is just a modulus shadow, but they have actually changed the shell so that Elite 2.0 is part of the plastic on both sides, and they've made it so it actually says lock and load and just saying shadow. And they have this sort of triangular texture on it, which looks very nice in the sun and offers a very nice feel to the blaster that really no other Nerf blaster can provide at this point. It is actually a pretty good looking blaster, even though when you flip it over, it looks like a Busby blaster. There's nothing, there's literally nothing at all. Nothing at all, not a single detail, nothing. Nerf logo, no. Lock and load, no. Elite 2.0, no. Rails, no. 
You wish, buddy. They didn't put anything. In fact, the only painted details on this blaster are lock and load, nerf, and Elite 2.0 on the one side. Three small prints. That's it. They couldn't be bothered to put even one of those prints on the other side. This is the first time that a blaster looks worse from the left side than the Ultra Speed. I can't believe I'm saying this, but yes, the Ultra Speed looks better on the other side than the lock and load. Also, one quick addition about the design before we continue forward. The reason why this doesn't work here is because it actually worked on the Modulus Shadow since that blaster was fully transparent and you had LEDs going all the way through it. So it created details out of the internals. This blaster just covers all that up, so it completely destroys the whole purpose of the original Modulus Shadow. It's the same thing with the Evader. If you were to paint the Evader, there'd be basically no detail because all the detail on the Evader relies on the internals. Same goes with the shadow and hence this thing does not work. This blaster has a main grip and a priming handle. The main grip is pretty big but it absolutely sucks. It seems like it should be comfortable except for this. What in the hell is this? It digs straight into the palm of your hand in a really weird jarring and uncomfortable way and it just doesn't feel right. It feels so off to hold this blaster. Whether you're using it right hand or left hand, it's just, oh my, it feels weird. It feels like there's something jutting into your hand. Like there's a little sharp bit sticking out right into the middle of the palm of your hand. And it doesn't feel good at all. And like the grip looks good. It looks like it should be really comfortable. And for the most part it is because it's smooth and fluted all the way around, but this thing just ruins it. It's actually a super awful grip because of that. And is pretty unforgivable. And for the top prime right here, you can see that, well, it's a big top prime. Very similar to something like the Strong Arms or the Retaliators, and it is pretty comfortable to put your hands on. So how does this blaster work? I don't know, because it's broken. Yeah. But what you're originally supposed to do is you're supposed to take up to six darts, you load them into here, you pull this thing back, you let go of it and it primes forward, and then you fire once. I said, you uh, you pull this back, you push it forward, and uh, you fire once. Yeah! It doesn't work! At all! And in fact, it worked really questionably out of the box. It got about the same performance as the Night Finder, and it, it does not work. It doesn't work. It literally broke just the other day. This blaster's cooked, and now there's a dart stuck inside of it. Can I at least get my dart back? Oh yeah, I can get the dart back. That's, that's lovely. It's cooked. It's broken. You guys remember when the Warden liked to break all the time? Here's the sequel. The sequel to the Warden is right here. I'm holding it in my hands. And you wanna know what makes this worse than the Warden? The fact that this was based off a blaster that was originally bad to begin with. They somehow made it worse this one is clipped together. Yeah. And are you ready for the price tag? 50 United States dollars. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50 dollars. 50 dollars. Ugh. $50. The warden was $20, and even then I'd say that was overpriced because you were getting crap. This one has been oversaturated with nonsense to bump the price up to $50. Are you kidding me? I haven't even gotten to the attachments yet. Both of the other attachments are the same, but we gotta talk about this thing. Because this thing is mainly why people bought this blaster. It's a scam. This was supposed to be a barrel attachment flashlight foregrip where you push this in and a little flashlight lights up. Oh look, it's got a plastic lens. Oh look, the battery door has been permanently welded shut. Listen, do you hear that? There's still internals in here. I can't open this because there's still a screw holding the battery door shut that is inaccessible 
because they put this stupid plastic cap over it that I'd have to drill through to access it. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this up. There are people somewhere in the world who thought that this is going to be better than the shadow. A reinvention of the shadow because this blaster was released immediately off the back of the double punch. The double punch came out. The double punch was really good. And they threw in one last little Christmas present before the end of 2023 to close off Elite 2.0. And holy crap! Did they go out with a bang. This is unexcusable. There's no way to even fix it. I A piece has snapped in here. You see how this thing moves back to push a dart into the breach? You see how it's not staying there? You have to hold it manually in order to get the thing to shoot. So like, let me see if I can actually get a dart to shoot out of this. Let's see if I can just do that. Hold it, let's try it. Hey, I got it to shoot one. That means I can do a firing demo. At least I can do a firing demo. Let's just get to the firing demo. Let's tactical customize it first, dude. Give it more tactical points, bro. That actually does kind of make it easier. Another one. Just, just. There. Another squib. It's nerf or nothing. Nerf or my ass! Oh, were you guys expecting it to actually shoot, like, moderately, like any other blaster released in the modern generation? No. It hits, like, Night Finder performance. Not even Night Finder, like, End Strike Alpha Trooper performance. I can't believe it. I can't believe they successfully did it. This now ranks number one as the worst blaster Hasbro has ever made. The worst blaster in the entire universe. This thing is actually comparable to those little dollar store blaster things that you find like vacuum sealed in those stupid plastic and cardboard packages hanging from shelves that are made of like the cheapest thin feeling like basically cardstock plastic and shoot like five feet except this one costs fifty dollars 
and every single thing about this blaster was a scam. The internals are cheaper than the shadow. It doesn't light up like the shadow did, even though I couldn't even be bothered to remove the little hole where the micro switch comes through to plug on the modulus, the modulus shadows front barrel extension. It doesn't work, it's clipped together, and it has every single thing that is bad about the shadow still there. Plus all of the added debuffs, if you will, of the Warden and the plastic quality of the Ace. This is literally a combination of the top three, like the worst blasters you could possibly think of. The Warden was awful because it didn't work. Check. The Ace was awful because it was uncomfortable, overpriced, and felt like crap. Check. And it just, it's the, the Modulus Shadow was awful because it came with a dysfunctional mechanism that was designed by an idiot that doesn't work even when you try and modify it. And the blaster is so big that you can't even use it as a sidearm, yet it holds six darts and you can't even really mod it because the plunger tube is like freaking tiny. Check. Oh, 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 what else, what else? Oh yeah, it also keeps all the crap from the technician. Remember the technician, the loadout pack, or the, the, the operator, the whatever the heck that pack was called, or they basically just oversaturated you with crap in order to bump the price tag up? Check, mate. The only thing that is good about this blaster is the fact that you can do this. That's it. You can do that with it. And that's cool. That's it. That's it. I can't find anything else to say that's positive about this. I guess you could say that it comes with a regulator stock, except that the regulator stock holds a magazine and this is an internal freaking mag so you can't even use the regulator stock for what it was designed for out of the box. It literally just feels like they threw as many bad, crappy ideas into one oversized, overpriced package. Just for the sake of doing such. It's like they just kept the overstock of everything they didn't want or need in the back. Oh, we've got a whole bunch of modulus shadows. Repaint it, throw it in the box. Oh, we've got more of those suppressor barrels, throw in the box. We've got those flashlights from Hong Kong, butcher them, then throw them in the box. More regulator stocks, throw them in. More modulus sights, throw them in as well. We'll call it the, the lock and load pack and we'll charge idiots $50. I am so happy that I only wasted 20 bucks on this because the scope was missing. I only wasted $20 on this thing because the scope was missing. So I'm not as mad as I would have been if we actually paid the full retail price of 50 bucks, but that does not excuse this thing. This thing still exists and that's a problem. The fact that it's $50, the fact that I am unironically going to stand here and justifiably say that this is a better value for your buck for $50. This! Then this damn thing, it's, it's made out of nothing. It's made out of crap. I am so infuriated at this point because of the fact that this thing was allowed to be released. Hasbro's quality control team must have been on meth because there's no way that this came out. There's no way that this thing came out. The warden worked questionably at the very best. And even then I'd say the warden is better because at least that thing shoots 70 FPS. But this one doesn't. This one shoots like an end strike blaster. In fact, an end strike blaster could probably outperform it. Stock. Oh my gosh, this, This, I, 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 this, I, I did, uh, I don't even.
I will not be giving you guys a purchase link in the description. Because if you buy this for retail price for $50, I don't know what to tell you. There is something wrong with you. There is something actually wrong with you if you spend $50 on this now, knowing what it does. I feel bad for anybody who didn't buy this. Who, I feel bad for anybody who bought this thing before because I actually thought it was going to be good. And now they're looking at it and they're watching this review and they're realizing they got scammed. You could make the argument that Alpha Strike was bad because that thing was designed to be cheap and bad, but they openly said that Alpha Strike was cheaper. Just because that was cheaper. So they had justification for that. This has no justification at all. It doesn't even have an excuse. It deliberately tries to hide the fact that it's so awful and that it's just dysfunctional, broken, oversaturated with crap, overpriced, gives you a whole bunch of attachments that you didn't ask for, and gives you a copy of a blaster that wasn't really received well to begin with, butchered and destroyed into a monstrosity that you can't even enjoy because it probably will break soon after you get it. Do not buy a lock and load. Do not. If you need this, this right here for whatever reason, get a modulus shadow. They sell them on Blaster Barn. You can find them on eBay. Buy a shadow instead, because the shadow you can open. The shadow doesn't break. The shadow has freaking lights in it. The shadow's awesome. In comparison to this, this is the shadow, but it's horrible. It doesn't work. It doesn't look good. It feels like crap. The grip sucks. This blaster can only go out one way. One way only. You know what this is. We gotta put this thing to rest properly. Let's go. Thanks for watching, y'all.